Fulanis and Hausa communities in Oyo receive cash empowerment from a federal lawmaker. On Monday, Fulani and Hausa communities residing in Oyo town were empowered with money by a politician identified as Akim Adini Adeyemi. He is a member of the House of Representatives and a chairman House Committee on Communications in the National Assembly. He had organized a town hall meeting to rob minds with people giving his account of stewardship. The meeting was attended by his father, Oba Lamidi Adeyemi Alafin, and the great people of Oyo Federal Constituency. The reps member seized the opportunity to highlight his achievement ever since he has been in the National Assembly. He talked about his legislative performance through moving motions and sponsoring bills. He then listed a series of bills and motions he has sponsored. He furthermore listed many projects and programs he has facilitated for the four local government he represents, such as roads, bridges, constitution, education, water, electricity, skill acquisition, and provision of solar power, street lights. All right. Um, so what do the people feel about this? That's that's basically the question. Like, what do the people like? Are they okay with this? Like, are they like, oh wow, you know, um, because now you've now compromised their position. Because let's be honest, okay, not going to assume, but he most likely called on, um, low earning individuals to this town hall, or low income earners. So it's not like okay, fine, you've given them money cash empowerment and then you're now listing the things that you have done of course that is gonna of course that that you've already compromised where they see you because you've given them money and it doesn't doesn't give you a good look i i'm so confused as to what the intentions might be for this it's honestly i find it very random um because now you've given them money and now you're listing the things that you have done to prove to them that what except you're trying i don't know what the intention is i don't know who you're representing um, are you trying to, you know, uh, gain votes for the next election for whatever position you want to en- enter into? I am unsure. But it's like, you can't give people money and then now start listing your what you have done. It's like, let the people come out for themselves and say, oh, wow, Senator, this, da, 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 you have done this for us. We are so proud and we are enjoying the benefits of what you have done. How many Northern lawmakers and senators can do that? Yorubas... Do that to your boss and it goes like this in Kano. Head or tail, we are really slaves of these people, no matter how we like to deceive ourselves. One thing is certain, 2023 is a mirage in the South, if nothing is done to alter the present arrangement. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know why everyone is still talking about this Igbo presidency and all that. Like, it's not going, I, in my opinion, I don't have facts to back this up. Again, it's in the future, so this can only be my opinion. I don't think it would have happened. I think that um, as much as you guys think that we're slaves, I understand that because measures are being put in place to to limit how far other tribes can go when it comes to power, as well as the ones that are in power currently are gatekeeping like like hell. As in, they are holding on to that lock and that gate and they will not open it for anybody and just anybody. But, and I get that, in that context, you can still find your slaves that are cool. But in another context as well, in another opinion... Or perspective imagine if if it was a president that would just be threatening to them they that is threatening it is threatening why because to the people that have perpetrated acts against it was viola- viol- violating them for generations to come yes you might think okay fine this Igbo's leaders are sell out but but in some way shape form or the other they are still afraid because they understand that the biafran war they were not right about it they are, they are still guilty from it there has not been any reconciliation act there has not been any compensation there has not been any memorial or public holiday there hasn't been anything to signify nigeria's part in the in the biafran war in which they would take responsibility for the lives that they took so again for the people that you have hurt You've hurt their generations from 1960 till now. And then you give them the power to become president, especially as their region um, is, and as especially as their region is the most industrial. Don't argue with yourselves. It is. It, as it is, it is the most industrial in the whole nation. Imagine if 
you know, they make the country better. Or even imagine as industrial as they are, they're now corrupt on top of that industrialization, the kind of money and profit that they'd be stealing. You know what I mean? Like, of course, I'm giving all these examples that are good and bad, but I'm just saying that these are the factors that the powers that be would take into consideration before they'd be like, oh, let's put an Igbo person in president. Because if there's another, if, 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 if an Igbo person was to be president or, you know, it was zoned to the southeast only, um, I genuinely think, I think, I think it would just be the face. It would just be one Igbo president and then the rest is as normal. Basically, the Igbo president is just for a face. That's it. I think it's the same way Oshimbajo, people describe him as, um, is it docile? non-existent just not there not active um and i guess that's what it is so it would be the same thing for the president and he would just look he would just look like a mug basically um <laughs> so, so this kind of empowerment gets us in view of course he does of course because it's like you you obviously have to prove to your people why you deserve your position or why you want them to have your vote or whatever but it's like why it is very strange. It is very strange for you to to um how do I describe it? For you to give them money first and then start giving your manifesto or giving your speech on what you have achieved and all that. And it's like, um, oh sure, sure, sure. Definitely not compromising. Definitely not compromising on the hand on the part of the other people. Um, what is wrong with this boy? <laughs> um, boy, this is a grown man. Okay, it's fine. People who chase his grandpa from the throne in Katunga doing stupid jihad. Because stupid, because the emperor Adjemi was already a Muslim at the time, and they brought their sword and spears against him, chased him away, and burned his palace. What name do you call this kind of boy? Boy, I. It's a bit odd to call him a boy. If you look at him, doesn't really look like a boy, does he? Um, but I guess it's a. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I service gifts without thanks. You and your pedo dad will come to judgment. Pedo dad. Wow. Um, if you like cut your give house of flani, they will never satisfy you. Wow. All right. Cool. Uh, someone also says, hmm. <laughs> That's what the, I mean. The person puts H M M M M and N like hmm. So again, I'm guessing we can interpret it as suspicious because it's like, um, you give them money first and then you want. I mean, house of representatives. I'm in the House of Assembly. Like, what what does he want? What does he want to, you know, sweeten the palms or grease the palms of whoever um, to get that position? I don't know. But it is what it is. But what I think, I don't forget to like and subscribe.